When did you first fall in love with jazz? I first fell in love with jazz probably in 1973. I've been exposed to it when I was in high school, but in 1973, when uh, when the fusion movement was real big, I became enamored with you know everything that Miles Davis was doing, Weather Report, Herbie Hancock, Joe Zawinul, and Shorter, those guys. Yeah. Did you hear it live? Is that what turned you on? Or yeah, I went to see the Mahavishnu Orchestra, John McLaughlin's band, in, uh, in 1973 at, uh, at Kent State, and that just opened my ears, opened my eyes, and blew my mind. What had you been listening to mostly before that? Rock and roll. I was a staunch rock and roller. And you were a drummer, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So did you play rock and roll like in a club circuit? I played in a band. We we played for dances and private parties. We played at Rainbow Gardens a couple of times. But I also played in the school stage band or jazz band, you know, in a large band format. So you know, I played a lot of Neil Hefty charts and and kind of bassy kind of stuff, that, that thing. And I really enjoyed it. You know, it was different. Do you still play music? No. Well, I play the stereo. I play that real <laughs> well. <laughs> when did you stop playing drums? I stopped after I was in a in a bar band playing rock, top forty rock and roll for an entire summer and that just burned me out and I said I'll never play this kind of stuff again. So I packed up my drums and never touched them since. When did you start traveling to go listening to specific jazz bands or to go to concerts or to go to festivals? Probably in 1980 I really got actively involved in switching from going to rock and roll concerts to going to jazz concerts and that's pretty much what I do now. I haven't been to a rock and roll concert in oh gosh more years than I can think of. So all of the concerts, the jazz concerts that you had the pleasure and the privilege of, of hearing. Uh, who, have, who, have, who have your favorites been? Can you name a few that, that really stood out for you as performers or well, performances? Yeah, I mean, having seen Miles Davis six times was certainly <laughs> on the top of the list, you know, and, uh, and Weather Report. But from an acoustic standpoint, um, gosh, you know, hearing Dave Holland's band, his, his sextet was really an amazing experience. And uh, actually, I find value in pretty much everyone I go to hear. There isn't anyone that I wouldn't um, that I would go to hear that I really didn't want to hear. So if I if I make the effort to go hear them, it's someone that I really appreciate. And I think that every jazz artist out there brings something different to the table. And and what they offer up is that because if everyone was doing the same thing, then why would you go hear all these people? You know. So it, it, it variety is the spice of life. You know, it's all part of. Uh, life's rich pageantry and, and I think it just makes it really exciting to hear all these different people with all the different takes on what we consider to be this broad spectrum called jazz. Have you had, read the uh, blog post, and I'm sorry I don't remember who it's from, but saying that jazz is dead? Just this last couple of weeks there's been a lot of controversy around the, well, the, you know, the internet that, on it. That, con that argument's been raging for a long time and one of my favorite quotes is by trumpeter Lester Bowie who was the, you know, the trumpeter with the art ensemble of Chicago and somebody asked him one time, so is jazz as we know it dead? And his reply was, it depends on what you know. <laughs> um, okay. When did you get involved with Jazz Erie? Uh, I got involved with Jazz Erie, uh, I guess about a year and a half ago. I, I've been putting off being a member for a long time, and 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 it, to, uh, to fall on a cliche from Groucho Marx, you know, my attitude was kind of, you know, I wouldn't want to be part of any any organization that would have me as a member. <laughs> but uh, a year and a half ago, I decided that it's it's finally time that uh, I, I got into it and, and became active, and that it, all, it coincided maybe about six months after I had gotten back into jazz radio at WQLA. And you immediately got on the board. I immediately got on the board, yeah. So, what's good, what's bad about Jazz Erie? Well, I think Jazz Erie serves a great purpose here because it, it, it supports and promotes uh, a, and an art form that people think is dead or is passe, and actually it's not. It's still evolving and still advancing and changing and incorporating new elements into it all the time. I think it's an exciting medium. And uh, I've always been impressed with what musicians can do, having been a musician myself at one point. You know, listening to what people can do. And when you hear jazz musicians play as a, as a pickup band, let's say, and they sound like they've been playing together for years, that to me is exciting because it shows the depth of what these musicians know as opposed to 
And going back to my rock and roll roots, you know, with the 1960s, you know, when the, when the guys would noodle around for hours on stage and do these jams that everyone thought was like, oh, wow, man, that was far out. But really, it was sophomoric, you know, where jazz musicians are so much more uh, knowledgeable about music as a whole and can improvise and sound like they've been playing together forever when really they haven't. That, to me, is the essence of spontaneous composition and, and as Whitney Balliot called it you know the sound of surprise that that's that's what makes it all worthwhile perfect thank you